So I've been having a really, really tough time in the last week, and as such, while I will detail all my thoughts on this episode, I wouldn't expect as many jokey jokes, bad puns, and humorous re-edits of scenes as normal. So if you watch my reviews for the bad comedy and Australianisms, I'm sorry, but I don't think I'll be able to give you those today. It's all just opinions. You also should check out Biffwee's review, which if you're wanting more of our normal routine of review structure, just ditch this and only watch his, because his will actually feel like the review that you were used to. So, Omni-Man vs. Homelander. The analysis was short and didn't cover much for Omni-Man, which is strange, because if they wanted to avoid spoilers, maybe don't show, but if you saw it, you probably know. Though I understand for Homelander, as acknowledging the comic any more than they did would be lame, because the comic doesn't deserve that. The cutaway for Omni-Man ended without any real humour, and the cutaway for Homelander was just all around disgusting due to the subject matter. That being said, the analysis was fine. The fight has some major downsides, but a lot of good elements. The animation has a lot of polish. I didn't particularly dislike the look of it at any point, aside from thinking Homelander's body doesn't deform enough to make it look like Omni-Man is really making contact with him in the first set of punches. Yes, this is the first few set of punches, that is not an excuse to not even animate the fist making contact with Homelander's body. They convey the power of speed of Omni-Man really well, and they also convey Homelander's speed well, and that one moment he gets to use it, the effects all look nice, the gore looked nice, the lighting for the ending was great, and the expressions are all extremely good. Sound design was really good, I enjoyed the meatiness of the bloody bits and the sound effects of Homelander's heat vision. Music was solid, while the track name is stupid and dumb, Brandon once again delivers a great track. Flick's acting was phenomenal, Yon Yi's Homelander is an amazing performance, he definitely had way more presence here than his last time at the role for pretty obvious reasons. And while he doesn't exactly sound like Homelander, at least, he doesn't sound like the voice I associate with Homelander, he pulls off the mannerisms perfectly and delivers a performance that, while not sounding like Homelander, does paradoxically sound like Homelander. Homelander was a Marvel or DC character who had no single individual portrayal across the series' history. This is a portrayal that I would be able to see as just as Homelander-y as the rest. His breakdown's fantastic, his death gurgles are great, he manages to hush his tone under his breath and extend the syllables of his words perfectly, and can drop his voice from sort of playfully arrogant to dead serious at the drop of a hat. Tom Shulk's Omni-Man, however, steals the show for me, giving me genuine chills, pulling off both a condescending tone like he doesn't even see Homelander as Homelander, he just sees a whining, petulant child, and yet still getting across some of the best tranquil fury in the series, seething with hatred when he needs to be while maintaining the composure and calm that Omni-Man is often known for, at least when he's not dealing with his own flesh and blood. The writing was also very good. Obviously, everyone sung praise for the setup. I've been very mixed on this season's setups, with one being acceptable, one being okay, and two just not really being all that good in my books, but this episode is fantastic. Only Man's stoic non-reacting to the events before just giving Homelander a threat is really well done, as is, of course, the reveal of what Homelander has done to Debbie and Homelander's entire spiel and performance. After that, the fight is a total stomp for Omni Man, but I'm not super bothered, though I do have a couple problems. This feels pretty well like what one would picture a crossover between the two as. They're both portrayed as strong as they normally are, at least in the sense that Homelander doesn't do much than destroying like a city block and Omni-Man is just way beyond that. He's just unfazed by anything Homelander does. It's less of a fight and more of Omni-Man teaching Homelander a lesson before ending his life for his actions. While Omni-Man won the fight, you could argue that he's the one who lost more in this altercation as his wife was killed. This episode mixes Omni-Man's genuine love of his family pretty well with his show portrayal as to not alienate the majority of viewers who only know him from the show. They do get across that he loves his wife by his rage at the start, and that he loves his son by how he immediately gets serious and ends the fight once Homelander threatens his kid. Really, it's probably the writing that separates this to the likes of Kynge vs. Lucy or the DBX to Chun-Li vs. Tifa for me. You could almost maybe get the impression that Omni-Man sees something of a Viltrumite mindset within Homelander and that's why he's holding back a little bit, but... That would be something you could get if it wasn't for the sheer condescending tone in Omni-Man's voice. Like, perhaps he does see that build from my mindset, but he feels disgust that Homelander has it while acting as childish as he is. Fighting like an experienced, deprived goon, trying out fear taxes instead of head-on battle, nearly bursting into tears and then crossing the line by threatening the rest of Noel's family. And to end it off, the death is really good. Brutal, bloody, visceral, basically everything I could have wanted John vs. Sable to be. Aided by the artistic use of silhouettes, the disturbing up close shots of the two, the crazed look in Omni-Man's eyes, and the muffled gurgling of Homelander as he chokes on his own heart that's still beating. Side note, due to how the ground is angled compared to Omni-Man, he's actually flying on a diagonal tilt instead of straight up perpendicular to the ground, which is not a criticism, I just find it mildly amusing. This all works to make a really phenomenal episode with a really major flaw, it is very short. This does bother me and it feels like way more could have been done, even if I do like what we got. From the references not being distracting, like combining the train scene with Homelander's many escapades lasering planes out of the air, to the reference of that one line he says to the Flaxons but edited makes sense in the context and be significantly more raw than just quoting it outright, to the fact that this animation looks incredible, which I suppose 
I've grouped it in the ref in the reference section for some reason. I guess there is another flaw you could say. I know a lot of people wanted to see an actual fight, and they didn't really get what they wanted. To an extent, I get what the episode was going for, but I also don't think that Homelander being more of a threat would have made it worse. After all, Omni-Man's warrior knowledge and experience is what would really allow him to win in this context, so I don't think it would have killed the episode if Homelander had actually thrown a few successful punches or got off more. Given Nolan was completely unharmed by Homelander's attacks, like his eyes are just unaffected by the heat vision, he just closed them, and his ears are bleeding, but they just seems fine. Like the big thing should have been that Blumney Man like actually knows what he's doing, and Homelander could have actually put up a fight. I do understand some people wanted more of a battle, and I do think the episode would be better if Homelander at least put up a little bit of a fight, at least being physically strong enough to stagger Omni Man, just not skilled, experienced, trade enough to actually be a challenge because he's just throwing his weight around with no experience. I know people have argued that while well, Homeland has never fought in the series, which is not true, he has fought Black Noir in the comic, and while in the comic he does die, you should note that Black Noir came out looking like this, so it's not like Homelander is a complete pushover when he's fighting an equal, which, you know, he's not, but still. This is probably my favourite of the season so far though, more so due to the incredible writing and voice acting than anything else. I don't want to give it a number score as I don't really think I can have enough, I don't think I have enough in me to put up an arbitrary number right now. Regardless, maybe this will make people realize that the number scores are more of an irrelevancy to, if anything, help people get an idea of what episodes I prefer to others or consider in a similar level of quality to others as opposed to any sort of true measurement for my thoughts on the episodes overall. They're more like a comparison for people. I like this episode. I think everyone did a good job with it. Uh, hopefully one day I can get Homeland of his Hancock on Death Battle. I'm not holding my breath, but I like it. It's not like Will Smith is ever going to lose relevancy. Especially if, like, I don't know, he ends up slapping Bruce Willis at Disneyland because he made fun of the third button on Will's jacket being slightly too far rotated to the side. I'll say this once, Lawrence. I hope it's understood. Get right back in your van. Get the fuck out of my neighborhood. This was an extremely close match. <laughs>